everyone, it's Swank Ivy again with another Letters to an Asexual. This is number 94. Have you ever had a conversation with one of those science bros who thinks they sound really educated and smart, but they're actually just babbling a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense? I decided to share an old science bro conversation with you where a person posted on their Tumblr blog about how asexuality is a trend and also we're not really asexual because we have sex organs and we must be claiming to reproduce by cloning because we have never heard that before. It's so clever and it completely contradicts our position and makes us exposed as fake, right? To be honest, my response to this is not particularly well-worded. Uh, it did happen about 10 years ago, so I don't know. I, I feel like 10 years ago I still had some pretty decent responses to things. This is not a particularly great response to it, but to be fair, the person's position was not a particularly great position, so they didn't really deserve my top-notch replies anyway. But I'm just going to share this with you, and I would love to hear from some of you folks in the comments if you've ever come up against somebody who really thinks they're making so much sense and that they've totally destroyed the argument for asexuality, but they just didn't even say anything that was scientifically correct and didn't even actually seem to understand what we even claim asexuality is. Because I seem to come across this an awful lot, and this is a good example of one. Mm. You know, I'm almost 45, and I'm starting to have trouble seeing small print. <laughs> I'm going to have to start wearing my reading glasses. I, I don't have a prescription, um, just like drugstore glasses, but for now I'm going to turn my, my phone sideways and make the letters bigger, like an old person. <laughs> Alright, so somebody on Tumblr who no longer has a blog under this title, so I can share the name without worrying too much about uh, exposing someone's ignorance and shaming them publicly. They used to go by logicality by division, because of course the blog name has the word logic in it. Uh, blog title, asexuality, dot dot dot, or is it? This is what they said about us. <clears throat> If I've ever seen one, I'd say asexuality is a trend, not a problem or issue to the general public. This may be closed-minded to some, but to the world, homosexuality is in the spotlight. And while homosexuality gets more and more media coverage, it leads to the creation of groups and organizations striving to stand out as well. Asexuality is, by local description, a disconnect from the regular social behavior of human nature. <laughs> While where it originated from is the word asexual, the lack of sex or sexual organs, unless you're budding or multiplying yourself through duplication, I would not consider asexuality your behavior as a person. Seeing as I have friends who describe themselves as asexual, it bothers me mainly on opinion of the fact they do have sexual organs. Case closed! The outcome of this brings me to conclude that 1. Something either traumatic had happened in their youth 2. Experience intense anxiety, even panic, at the thought of any sexual interaction 3. Feel fear, terror, or disgust about a specific kind of activity, such as sexual intercourse or contact with genitals for insecurity over their physical appearance. While some of these people enjoy hugging, kissing, and similar touching, others find that their feelings of revulsion or anxiety extend to all physically intimate contact. This brings me to the conclusion. Genophobia, or the fear of sex. A person can be subjected to genophobia by trauma in their past, such as rape, molestation, incest, insecurities, and as a result of pre-existing fears, nosophobia, gymnophobia, etc. The extreme fear can lead to trouble in romantic relationships. Those afflicted by genophobia may stay away from getting involved in relationships to avoid the possibility of intimacy. This can lead to feelings of loneliness. 
Genophobic people may also feel lonely because they may feel embarrassed or ashamed of their personal fears, not to mention erotophobia, fear of sex or negative attitudes about sex, can also be described with genophobia. So, is asexuality really the correct term, or is genophobia the real issue? <sighs> so, I replied to this person by pulling out certain quotes, and I opened with their quote about how asexuality is a trend and is not really a problem or issue to the general public, and how homosexuality being in the spotlight has inspired other groups to grab their titles out of nowhere. So I replied and said, you know, you should really know better than to post things like this. It's so poorly researched and so demonstrative of ignorance that I'm surprised you're not embarrassed to have posted it. And I'm not saying that to be an ass. I just can't believe you would hear about something like asexuality, pull out around half of the thoroughly debunked reasons for it, and toss them around like no one's thought of this before, and fill in the blank spots in your ignorance, painting with little dabs of nonsensical points. Every single thing you said about asexuality here is either incorrect or misleading to the point of disingenuousness. So I quote them saying this, If I've ever seen one, I'd say asexuality is a trend, not a problem or issue to the general public. I said, if you mean that asexuality is a trend in that more people are starting to identify that way nowadays, sure, you're right. That's partly because of the awareness efforts of the people like those you're analyzing here. Asexuality is becoming more popular because now more people know it exists to describe them, but I doubt that's what you're actually talking about here. Because usually when people say, oh, asexuality, that's a trend, they mean it like, that's a new style or that's a passing phase. I shouldn't have to explain to you why listening to someone talk about identity and dismissing it as a silly phase is disgustingly inappropriate behavior, so I won't. Also, to the general public? Well, no, it's not applicable to the general public, because the general public is sexual. I hope you're not making an argument that nothing needs awareness unless it affects all or most people. Are you hearing yourself? Your problems aren't really affecting me, so I just don't see why they're relevant. Really? Quote, This may be closed-minded to some, but to the world, homosexuality is in the spotlight, and while homosexuality gets more and more media coverage, it leads to the creation of groups and organizations striving to stand out as well. Um, so, you're blaming the queer movement for supposedly inspiring a bunch of other people to make up sexual orientations for attention? Slick! Can't be bothered to counter an argument that's not even really an argument. Quote, Asexuality is, by local description, a disconnect from the regular social behavior of human nature. Oh, really? Who's local description? I'll go out on a limb here and suggest it's very local, as in localized only in your head. No one who identifies as asexual describes it as a disconnect from the regular social behavior of human nature. No one. We're almost saying the opposite, actually, that sexuality is not necessarily an intrinsic aspect of every human's nature. We're trying to make people realize that A, that's true, and B, that's all right. Quote, while where it originated from is the word asexual, the lack of sex or sex organs. Unless you're budding or multiplying yourself through duplication, I would not consider asexuality your behavior as a person. Isn't that precious? It's an asexual reproduction joke. You do understand that no human who claims asexuality is going to be applying it to reproductive processes, right? It is horribly misleading for you to pretend you're unable to accept the validity of asexuality as a sexual orientation because asexual is also a type of reproduction. Some people call penis in vagina missionary position sex vanilla. I doubt that means people gasp and cover their mouths thinking you're talking about sex when you ask for a vanilla birthday cake. Context is everything. Sexual orientation isn't behavior, by the way. Asexuality isn't abstinence. It's lack of sexual attraction. And since it'd be absurd for a human to claim the ability to reproduce without sexual reproduction, it's just really low to make fun of us as though that's what we must be claiming. Do you really have to pretend our claims are that ridiculous so you can feel justified in dismissing them? 
Then you went through and made a nifty little numbered list of what you think describes your asexual friends. You just up and decide they were abused during youth, are afraid of sex, and are insecure over their appearance. Somehow this suggests a diagnosis to you? You apply absolutely no investigative discussion or attempt to listen to what asexual people are saying about themselves and immediately link to a dictionary definition about the fear of sex and present it with a little ta-da? Is this the right term? Or is it, as I've shown, actually all about fearing sex, obviously? You're not equipped to figure us out at all. And you don't even seem inclined to. You began this ramble with an intent to write us off as a trend and ended it by diagnosing us with fear of sex. Seriously, if I had written something as deeply flawed and as pockmarked with ignorance as this, I would quickly delete all evidence and crawl into a hole. You should know better than this. Asexuals are people who aren't sexually attracted to others. Beyond that, they're as varied as anyone else. In attitudes toward sex, in demonstration of physical affection, in libido, in abuse experiences, in mental and physical illnesses, etc., we are not, as a whole, people who are afraid of sex, nor are we people who are insecure with ourselves, unable to date, avoidant of human relationships, or sexually slash psychically scarred. Individual people of both asexual and more normative sexual orientations do exhibit sex-related fears, abuse experiences, human relationship problems, or appearance-related self-esteem issues, but that's irrelevant when discussing the reality of asexuality. And do me a favor and don't bring up an individual person you know, who you think identifies as asexual but fits your description. When the people you are talking about are telling you all your facts are wrong, you need to listen and stop it. You are only making yourself look like a jerk right now. Do yourself a favor and think about why you want to write off asexuality as a silly, trendy identity that's rooted in fear of sex. Now think about what you get out of it versus what we receive every time someone like you tries to do this to us. Is it worth it? Watch my asexual bingo video. You might see a few of the same comments you just made. The person didn't attempt to rebut, but I did get a couple of little cheers in the comments, including this lovely comment from someone who followed me who wrote, It's such an inspiration to watch you work, Swank Ivy. Smiley face. And I replied, Why, thank you. I really have to pick my battles. And halfway through this one, I just got disgusted because there was no meat there, not even a half-hearted attempt to make a real point using arguments that weren't logical fallacies, though the effort clearly poured into trying to sound smart was top-notch quoting the dictionary at the end, while loading up this essay with misspelled words and homophone confusion was just the vanilla icing on this cake. Oops, did I say vanilla? Words only have one meaning. I must be talking about sex. That or those people who do their lovemaking vanilla style must smell awfully good after. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that one. So I will see you next time I find something ignorant to talk about. Thanks for watching.